Lovers, I'm Alex with Minerva. Today we're going to be working on a sew along for Tilly and the Buttons, Coralie. Makers, this is such a great pattern to have in your stash. You get not only a one-piece swimsuit, you also get a two-piece with a high-waisted bikini or it can be also low-waisted along with a top but makers, you have endless possibilities with this pattern as you can hack it multiple times or perhaps use one of the many combinations that is outlined on the pattern. It is rated for intermediate, but makers, I believe that after you watch today's sew along, you'll be able to tackle this pattern in no time. Great pattern to have in your stash, makers. I would definitely get this one. And we are going to be working with this beautiful turquoise um, swimwear a knit like our fabrics. It's part of Minerva's core fabrics. And makers, we have this on our website in more than 10 colors. So definitely go check that out. All right, makers, let's get started. Hi, makers. Today, we're going to be working on Tilly and the Buttons Coralie Swimsuit. Makers, such a great pattern. It states that it is for intermediate, but with today's so long, I am pretty confident that you are a beginner and you are ready to learn some new skills so you can tackle this pattern. It comes in sizes 6 to 34. And makers, if you turn it over, you will see all the different combinations that you can do with this pattern. You get a one-piece swimsuit. You can do a high back. You can do a low back. You have also the two pieces have a high waist bikini or you have something that's a little bit more lower waist. You have a ruffle in the front. You also have a ruffle in the back. You have ruffles at um, the bikini. So you have so many combinations. I have counted at least 15 different combinations that I can do for this pattern in makers. That doesn't even include hacking the pattern where we can add um, a little bit of length to the one piece and then do gathers on the side with strings. So again, great pattern to have in your stash. Let me tell you about the pieces that you are going to need. And makers, keep in mind that um, this pattern has so many different combinations. I have decided to just cut the largest piece and I am going to go ahead and trace my pattern. But you're going to need to cut a front and you're gonna cut one on the fold and one lining on the fold. You're also going to need the back piece and you're going to cut one on the fold and one of lining on the fold. You're also going to need the front neckline ruffle and you're going to cut one on the fold. As I mentioned, I am doing a shelf bra, so you're going to cut one of lining on the fold. Makers, I really also want to do a back ruffle. So I want to do a back neckline ruffle and I'm going to cut two. And I'm also going to cut a neckline binding for the high back. And I'm going to cut one on the fold. Let me tell you about the fabric you're going to need. So makers, I am using Minerva's Core Range Chlorine Resistant Swimwear Lycra Knit. This color is called Turquoise and we have this in more than 10 colors on the website. It's a great fabric because as the name states, it's chlorine resistant, so great for the pool. And of course, this will last you a very long time. Again, we have this in a more than 10 different colors on the site. So definitely go take a look at all the colors. You're also going to need lining fabric. And makers, I'm gonna put two choices here. You can do swimwear lining or you can do power mesh. This is, um, it's a little bit different 
Yes, and I tend to get hot in my swimsuits because obviously we're outside, it's the summer. So I really prefer a little bit of kind of like that mesh feel more than the lining. I will go ahead and tag both just in case you prefer one over the other, but I definitely will be using Power Mesh today. But you can also use the traditional swimwear lining. Let me tell you about the notions you're going to need. You're going to need thread. You're going to also need a swimsuit elastic. I'm using um, a little bit of braided elastic for, um, for my shelf bra. I'm also using swimwear bra cups and makers. Make sure that you um, choose the correct size and we have different sizes for this. And of course, a label. All right, makers, go ahead and select the correct size. Keep in mind you're making a swimsuit, so you need to pick the correct size. This will have about 10 to 11 inches of negative ease. Remember, we are wearing a swimsuit when we're in the water or just walking about. We don't want anything shifting on us. So go ahead and pay attention to the correct size that you need to um, select. Go ahead and cut your fabric and mark your notches and let's begin. Makers, I have my lining piece, my shelf bra. So I am going to show you how to do this with or without the cups. So without the cups, I want you to pull out your shelf lining and you have your swimwear elastic. This is um, 3 8 of an inch wide. And you are going to use a zigzag stitch makers all the way around for this pattern. You are going to put this at the bottom and you are going to slightly pull. Makers, I don't want you to pull this much. I want you to slightly pull. And I want you to stitch a zigzag stitch at the bottom. Go ahead and do that. Because I have my shelf bra lining and then I also have my elastic. I have my sewing machine set at a zigzag stitch, which is what Tilly recommends. And again, I'm going to stitch this and I'm going to slightly pull on my, um, on my elastic. And I left a little extra at the start right here, just so if I need to pull, I can, which I'm probably going to do right now, but go ahead and start. that we have this like this. Tilly's asking you to go ahead and fold and stitch again. And really the reason why we're doing this is we wanna make sure that the elastic is not right up against our skin. So go ahead and do that again. This is what the shelf bra looks like. I went ahead and stitched again. So this is the right side, that's the wrong side, but now I'm going to put that off to the side and I am going to show you if you are doing this with bra cups. And a couple of things to keep in mind, I am going to be using that braided elastic and the reason why I'm doing that is because I have a larger bust and if you have a larger bust, this will just give you a little bit more support so same thing as we did on um on our other shelf bra i'm going to put this at the bottom and probably in this case what i'm going to do is i'm going to cut it shorter about one inch shorter in length and i'm going to have that so it stretches let me show you go ahead and measure I'm going to take an inch away and makers I'm going to cut it right there and what I'm going to do is I'm going to slightly again stretch this so when I am sewing it I am stretching it just like we did with the other shelf bra that we did not, um, that we didn't add shelf cups. 
And again, this is perfect if you have a larger bust, it just gives you more support. All right, so again, same thing. Makers, if you have an overlocker or a serger, you can go ahead and serge that piece at the bottom. You have to make sure that you are stretching it. I will go on my sewing machine and do this, but it is the same way. Once you stitched it in, I want you to fold, right? I want you to fold and stitch it again, just like we did with the other shelf bra, and then I'll show you how to add the bra cups. Go ahead and do that. So now that I went ahead and finished that, and if you could see, I went ahead and searched the edge, and I also stitched on the side, right? So now we have these cups, and I'm gonna put it this way. Makers, we wanna make sure that we press these in and that you pin them in. So I need to measure where these are gonna go and kind of figure out where they're gonna go. I'm gonna go do that now. Once I do that, I want you to stitch all the way around your um your swimwear cup so go ahead and measure where these will fall on your bust make sure that you are comfortable where they're at that the center that you have the center of your um lining your swimwear lining bra is the center and then place your cups go ahead and do that now once you do that go ahead and pin them all around and stitch a stretch zigzag stitch all the way around. So I am doing a zigzag stitch all the way around my cup. In makers, I have a nude thread at the top, and then I have white thread at the bottom of my bobbin because I want to make sure it matches my cup as much as possible. So do this for both cups. Just try to keep it as flat as possible when you are stitching. Go ahead and do that for both your cups. If you are doing um, the swimwear cups on your on your swimsuit, I went ahead and sewed in my cups. And makers, now I want you to grab a pair of just scissors or snips and go ahead and cut through. And I want you to cut this um, this part of your cups. If you are doing a swimsuit shelf bra. And just cut around and you really want to make sure that you get rid of this part just because you need negative space to put in your bust in the shelf bra so go ahead and do that now go ahead and cut this inside piece if you're doing the shelf bra with your cups go ahead and do that now I went ahead and cut that lining piece that's inside the bra cups and makers, I tend to just push these up and down based on if I need them to just lay flat, all right? So I'm going to put this off to the side. And makers, I'm going to be doing something a little different from what Tilly has in her pattern because I really want my seams inside my pattern to be, my swimsuit to be encased in the lining, which is different from what they have in the swimsuit. So bear with me. So I'm going to grab my main swimsuit fabric. And if you have a print, your print's going to go right side up. And then I'm going to grab my front main piece of fabric. And that is going to go print down. So you're going to put those two right sides together. Okay. Right sides together. So again, if you have a print, it's gonna be on the inside. So again, back piece, print up, front piece of your swimsuit, and that print is gonna go down. Now I want you to grab your front lining, and obviously in my case, it doesn't matter, but that's gonna go my lining, 
and then I'm going to grab my shelf bra and that's going to go wrong side up right and then I'm going to grab the back lining and I'm going to put that at the top makers you have notches for your bust your waist and your hip i want you to line all of those up on the sides so go ahead and do that now i'm going to pin or in my case i'm going to use wonder clips we have these on the side they are wonderful and perfect for applications like this where you have perhaps slippery fabrics and you don't want things to move or things like faux suede that you don't want to put holes through your fabric so this is perfect so i'm going to pin both sides so let's do that right now go ahead and pin both sides of your swimsuit fabrics go ahead and do that now makers so i went ahead and put my wonder clips on the side and again i didn't say anything about stitch we are still clipping and pinning right so now let's go to the bottom of our swimsuit and i want you to fold the bottom of your swimsuit and i want you to find the center and i put a pin you can put a mark whatever is easiest all right and i did that for my lining and i also did that for my bottom pieces so i want you to find all those centers i want you to go ahead and pin or use a clip whatever is easiest i'm using a clip or a pin because it's just easier to show you okay and i want you to you mark that center of that bottom of your swimsuit okay i want you to pin those or clip and then i want you to find the corners all right find the corners and pin or clip whichever is easiest again finding my other corner in the corners on my lining and i'm pinning right and you can of course make sure that all, all of these are lined I am just aligning all of this right so makers now I want you to take your swimsuit and I want you to stitch with a zigzag stitch or you can also use a basting stitch if you want to just put all of this together and try it on I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and use a zigzag stitch and you have a five millimeter or a quarter of an inch seam allowance which yes it's a little bit um a little bit thrill seeking on the edge but that is the seam allowance for the pattern again five millimeter or a quarter of an inch and you're gonna stitch your sides again you have to use a zigzag stitch because this is a stretch fabric and you are going to again stitch the bottom go ahead and do that now if you are having issues with the fabric and perhaps it's bunching under your presser foot go ahead and put a piece of tissue paper under it and start right there and keep going so i have a piece of tissue paper and i also have a little piece of washi tape at the bottom right by my presser foot and i can see it it just gives me my seam allowance since it is um it's five millimeter a quarter of an inch so i can see it through my tissue paper and again i have a zigzag stitch makers just take your time also if you have a serger or an overlocker you can also do this in your overlocker just make sure that you are not pulling on your fabric all right so just make sure that you are not pulling your fabric and just go ahead and stitch the sides and the bottom go ahead and do that now so i went ahead and stitched the sides stitch the bottom so now I'm going to pull the back lining in the back and 
I'm going to grab from the inside. And this is what I wanted, makers. So that's the outside of my swimsuit. That's the inside of my swimsuit. I still have to serge it um, before I do. I'm going to go ahead and try this on in case I want to raise the legs or anything like that. But that's why I wanted to um, go ahead to do it this way. And let me show you. So that is, um, those are your shelf bra. And again, everything is in case. So it's encased inside and you don't see any seams on the outside or the inside so makers now i want you to attach the back lining to the back fabric right and then i also want you to attach the front lining in your shelf bra if you are doing that to your front fabric so go ahead and do that now and makers you can use a basting stitch because we are just attaching these two to each other, right? Or you can use a zigzag stitch. So whatever is easiest, just keep in mind that you have a five millimeter or a quarter of an inch seam allowance. So that is your seam allowance and you need to stay in that, um, in that seam allowance. Bakers, I went ahead and attached my lining, right? to my fabric all the way here at the top and i also did the same thing while i was at the sewing machine i went in ahead and attached the lining to my fabric at the legs on both sides and makers i just did a basting stitch i didn't do zigzag stitch for right now i am just attaching those two together so i just did a straight stitch if you use a zigzag stitch for these it's fine just for this you're just basting eventually you will have to use a zigzag stitch when you put your elastic on which leads me to my next step so i want you to go ahead and attach your elastic and only on the underarms of your front and back so leave about i would say one centimeter or about um five eighths of an inch and go ahead and attach your elastic only on the underarm. So it'll be from this edge to that edge. All right. And you want to do a zigzag stitch for this. So leave a little extra at the top just so you can hang on to it on your sewing machine. And go ahead and do a zigzag stitch all the way down. And I want you to do that for both sides. Go ahead and attach your elastic on your sewing machine to the underarm seam. And if you're using elastic, I want you to create a little tension. So just pull on it slightly. Don't pull on it that much. That's a big no-no. Go ahead and just pull on it slightly. Just a little bit. You want to create tension. You don't want it to completely stretch. You just want to pull on it slightly. Go ahead and do that now for both right and left sides of your swimsuit. Do that now. Makers, so I'm at my sewing machine. And again, remember, I am using a zigzag stitch as I am attaching my elastic. And remember, you added that little bit at the start. So I just, I'm hanging on to it just so when I'm starting out. So go ahead. And I'm getting towards the end and I'm going to leave again about about like eight ten millimeters makers I went ahead and attached my elastic under the arm and now I want you to fold right and you're gonna have your trusty I like my wonder clips So now I want you to take it to your sewing machine and again I want you to use a zigzag stitch because we want to enclose that elastic. Go ahead and do that now for both of your underarm seams. Go ahead and do that now. Makers, 
I went ahead and attached my elastic and I enclosed it right on both sides of my underarm seam. Now I want you to do the same thing for your leg openings. I want you to grab your elastic same way that we did the underarm seam. I want you to start at that crotch seam, right? I want you to start there, do your zigzag stitch all the way around and overlap your elastic by about two centimeters or three quarters of an inch. Once you do that, I want you to go ahead and turn it because we want to enclose our elastic the same way as we did the underarm seam and go ahead and zigzag stitch again. Do that for both leg openings. Go ahead and do that now. Makers, I went ahead and added in the elastic on my two leg openings. And for now, I'm gonna put this off to the side. I am going to grab my back uh, ruffle and I am just going to go ahead and pin these two together. Makers, we're going to stitch them together at a quarter of an inch or five millimeters. Go ahead and do that. Once you do that, I want you to finger press your seam allowance open and I want you to stitch that seam allowance down on each side. Go ahead and do that now. And this is for the back ruffle. Makers, I went ahead and stitched my two pieces together and I also pressed right where my two seams meet and I stitched it down just with a straight stitch. So I went ahead and attach my two back ruffles the makers that's what i mean when i say kind of like stitch down your seam allowance right now i want you to grab your front ruffle and makers you can you can actually even make these um longer if you wanted to because remember you're going to gather them so you can make them longer you can make them thinner you could, you could have a lot of fun with this so go ahead and pin your front front ruffle to the back ruffle and just as we did go ahead and stitch them together and then finger press your seam allowance and stitch it down go ahead and do that now i went ahead and attached my front ruffle to my back ruffle pieces i pressed pressed them with my fingers and then i stitched that down makers now i want you to grab this piece with your ruffles and I want you to create two rows of gathering stitches which means that you are going to start right there go all the way around you're going to stop right there and you are going to leave your threads long to not backstitch we do not want to lock in our stitches because we want to gather these so go ahead and do that two rows of gathering stitches on the front ruffle and also two rows of stitches on the back ruffles and just make sure that you start and stop right where the seams meet. So I have my machine set at five millimeter, it's longest stitch length and of course my thread is long so you have it, two rows of gathering stitches, make sure you do that all the way around. I went ahead and got all my gathering done all around so now I went ahead and found my center front in my front ruffle and I also am going to grab the binding and I also went ahead and marked the center front and makers I just folded it in half found the center and that is it same for the um same for the front ruffle and you really just want to match match that right and you also have some notches on your binding. They are right there. And that's your shoulder notch, which coincides with these. So you have those notches. I have them right somewhere around here. Maker, so again, find that notch for your shoulder. And your shoulder seam is right here. Go ahead and pin that on that spot and what you want to do is you just want to pull on your gathers so it meets the same length as the binding right so there it is just a little longer i'm just going to pull on those gathering stitches 
through those threads and I'm just gonna match the same length. I went ahead and gathered my front ruffle and makers. I went ahead and stitched the ends of the binding together and I finished them the same way that we did all the other ones. See it? So now I want you to go with right sides together and pin that and that will be your center back. And just as we did with the front ruffle, we are going to gather our back ruffle so it matches the length of the binding. So go ahead and do that now. Go ahead and gather your back ruffle so it matches the length of your binding. And of course, don't forget to stitch your binding together so that will be your center back. Go ahead and do that now. Makers, I want you to, once you are done pinning the binding, to your front and back ruffle and doing all those gathers, I want you to take it to your sewing machine and that you do a zigzag stitch. And remember you have a seam allowance of a quarter of an inch or five millimeters. So take your time and make sure that things are not twisted and that your gathers are even. Go ahead and do that now. Once you do that and you are happy with how it looks, I want you to go ahead and take out those gathering stitches. I went ahead and attached my binding to my ruffles and makers I want you to go ahead and mark the center front on um, your big ruffle piece you just did go ahead and mark the center front if you are thinking how do I do that you have the two shoulder points with those seams meet just fold it in half right and go ahead and just mark your center front there's mine right right there and now I want you to grab your swimsuit and same thing I want you to mark your center front same way just fold in half there's mine and I want you to grab your ruffle piece and you are going to match those two spots right there in the center front and pin and you want to pin your center front the same way and makers make sure you're not stretching your fabric just go ahead and just um just put it in place and just keep going up up the neckline and you're going to stitch this with a quarter of an inch or five millimeter zigzag stitch. Go ahead and do that for your front neckline. I attached my binding at the front. And now makers, I want you to do the exact same thing. Make sure none of this is twisted, right? Definitely wanna make sure nothing is twisted. And just the same way as we did. And you see this right there, go ahead and cut it. You don't need that anymore. Cut that at both sides. And makers, just the same way, and I'm trying to make sure that my ruffle is not twisted in any way, is I'm going to go ahead and put it in the back that, um, that you, same way, just go ahead and grab your center back, pin, and just the same way as we did the front, just go ahead and pin and take it to your sewing machine and do a six X stitch with, um, with a quarter of an inch or quarter of an inch or five millimeter. Makers, so I attach my binding in the back. And again, you can go ahead and cut that extra elastic in the back. Now, I want you to grab your elastic and I want you to start in the center back in just the same way as we have added elastic all over our swimsuit. Just put a little tension on your elastic, just a little bit. So go ahead and add elastic to the binding. 
right where you had it all the way around in a continuous loop and go ahead and overlap the back. I would say five eighths or one and a half centimeter right here. So go ahead and do that. We are almost towards the end. Now that you went ahead and added in your elastic, I want you to fold your binding and I wanna make sure that you keep it pretty taut, right? Fold your lining, your binding over your elastic, make sure that you pin it, and I want you to top stitch, same way, zigzag stitch. Once you do that, I want you to go ahead and trim any um, excess binding that you may have. Makers, I went ahead and attach and close my binding in and now the pattern's asking you to any excess fabric like I do here go ahead and grab your shears and just cut it as close as you can to the stitches and makers once you do that all around your neckline you are all done All right, makers, I hope you enjoyed that so long. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and leave them below. As always, I will go ahead and tag the fabric, pattern, and notions that I use in today's so long. Don't forget to sign up for a Minerva Craft Club account. You get a discount on all your orders for 12 months. And of course, makers, don't forget to sign up for a free account on our website when you can share your makes, get inspiration, and create a wish list for any projects that you would like to do later on. All right, makers, I will see you next time.